Good day to Professor Dr. Rosita Safawi and everyone. So today, we will present our fish feed making video assignment. I'm Nelson Natlia and I will present about the importance of our selected species, which is the juvenile of tilapia or Oreochromis denoticus. As we know, the tilapia is famous with the high potential of easily to raise and harvest. The commercial benefits including the fast growth, resistant to disease, a diet of readily abundant algae and zooplankton, and high demand in market. Hence, they are cheap, simple preparation and milk flavor. Moreover, juvenile tilapia is known as the omnivorous that consume both of plants and animals. Hello, my name is Omar Irfan Akir bin Abdul Ghani. Matrix number PS2111032. I am going to present about nutrition requirements for tilapia. There are five nutrition requirements for tilapia, which is protein, lipid, carbohydrate, vitamin, and minerals. Firstly, protein. The 10 essential amino acids required by Nai tilapia are the same as those required by other fin fish. Protein needs for optimal growth have been observed to vary according to own dietary protein quality fish size or age, and diet energy amount. Next, lipid. The minimal need for dietary lipids in tilapia diet is 5%, while diets containing 10 to 15 lipids have been shown to boost growth and protein consumption efficiency. The quantitative requirement for omega-6 PUFA in Nile tilapia is around 0.5 to 1%, unlike marine fish species. Tilapia does not appear to have a requirement for omega-3 highly unsaturated fatty acid such as EPA and DHA and its omega-3 fatty acid demand may be supplied with linolenic acid. Carbohydrate Carbohydrate are added to tilapia meals to provide a low cost energy source and improve pellet binding qualities. Tilapia may efficiently use up to 35 to 40% digestible carbohydrate. A variety of factors influence tilapia carbohydrate use, including carbohydrate supply, other dietary elements, fish species and size, and feeding frequency. Vitamin Vitamin supplementation is not required for tilapia in semi intensive farming systems. However, vitamins are often required for optimal development and health of tilapia in intensive farming systems with limited natural resources. Lastly, mineral. There is little information available on tilapia's mineral needs. Tilapia, like other aquatic species, may absorb minerals from culture water, making quantitative detection of this component challenging. The amount of mineral to be added to the diet, like vitamins, is determined by the source of the element. Hello everyone, my name is Husna Hazwani. I will explain on the ingredients used and the reason we choose the ingredients. As you can see, this is a list of ingredients that we choose to add into our feed. They are cassava meal, rice bran, soybean meal, fish meal, fish oil, the calcium, phosphate and vitamins, minerals, premix. Each of the ingredients give a specific and important role for juvenile tilapia production. Okay, firstly, cassava meals. Cassava meals supply carbohydrates, exhibit good growth for juvenile tilapia. Rice bran is an energy-rich feed supplement. Soybean meal is a suitable alternative protein source essential for juvenile growth. We can replace fish meal with soybean meal. This ingredient is low cost and easy to find. Next is fish meal. Fish meal is used because it is high in protein and high palatability to fish meal. Fish oil provides essential polyunsaturated fatty acid PUFA. They are sources of for metabolic energy for juvenile growth. However, fish meal and fish oil doesn't need to add in high quantity as Nile tilapia is an omnivore. We can replace them with other alternative ingredients such as soybean meal. For this case, we can save more in feed production costs. Next is the calcium phosphates acts as feed additive. We included in very little quantity in return improve growth performance and decrease juvenile mortality rate. Lastly, vitamin and mineral premix are formulated to ensure healthy juvenile with efficient feed conversion ratio FCR. That's all from me. Thank you. Next is feed formulation. For per 100 gram dry meter basis, both fish meal and soybean meal required is 25 gram.
cassava required is 23 gram, fish oil is 4 gram, rice bran is 20 gram, and both thigh calcium phosphate and vitamin or mineral premixes are 2 grams. All this added together will produce a 100 gram of feed. For wet weight, there are slight increase in fish meal, soybean meal, and cassava due to its moisture content. To get the amount of ingredients required to make a 5,000 5, gram of feed, each ingredient's wet weight needed to be multiplied by 50. These are the chemical compositions of each ingredient. For protein, fish meal contains the highest among the ingredients with 65.25% of it are protein. Came in second with 45.50% is soybean meal. The other three ingredients contain less than 15% of protein. For a lipid, fish oil contains the highest with 17.2% and soybean meal with 16.29%. For NFE, which stands for nitrogen free extract, cassava contains 67.549%, rice bran with 57.2%, and soybean meal with 24.62%. For ash content, fish meal have the highest with 16.56%. Last but not least, for fiber, only rice bran has the highest amount with 10.30%. Next is is nutritional value of the feed. The feed comprises of 30.2% of protein, 10.6% of lipid, 43.6% of NFE, 8.6% of ash content, and 5.5% of fiber. Assalamualaikum and good day to Prof. Rosita and my friends. My name is Ashraf bin Abdul Momin and I'll be presenting my part which is the feed making process. So, there are six steps in producing the fish feed so the first step is preparing the ingredients you must pre make sure all the ingredients are prepared before making the feed to avoid missing important ingredients next weighing the ingredients so each ingredients must be weighed based on the feed formulation developed for the target species for instance uh, weigh the fish meal exactly the same as the feed formulation so that the nutrient composition for the feed does not change. After that, mixing the ingredients. After weighing, the ingredients must be poured into a basin to be mixed with the other ingredients by using our hands. Fish oil and water will be later added after all the ingredients has been added and mixed well. Then, after mixing up, mixing up all the ingredients, the mixture will be poured or put into the grinder to produce small pellets, this mix the mixture must be pressed slowly uh, into the grinder so that the pellets produced will be compact. Next, the small pellets will be dried inside an oven overnight. This is to produce dry pellets that can have longer lifespan. Finally, the dry pellets will be kept in a sealed transparent plastic and stored inside the storage rack to maintain its lifespan and avoid the pellets from being from being lethargic that is all from us thank you and have a good day